Hey there, Lysandra Everett here, and I want to shoot this video to talk to you today about night terrors in children. Um, I was actually really uh, inspired to shoot this video because uh, last night I was actually able to stop one from happening in my daughter. We haven't had one in a really, really long time. And so I wanted to shoot this video because I know there are parents who are out there that have experienced night terrors in children, didn't know what the devil was happening or, you know, what, what caused it. And so I'm writing, um, you know, writing, <laughs> I'm shooting this video really from the perspective of a parent whose children had night terrors and also as the older sister of a child who had night terrors so that you can kind of get an understanding of, of what's happening, uh, not from the professional perspective, but from but from someone who's actually experienced it. So. Um, first of all, let's clarify the difference between night terrors and nightmares. Um, nightmares are different because they happen at a, at a different stage of sleep. You know, usually with a nightmare, you know, you think about your dream, you feel like you're part of a movie, for lack of a better term. You know, with a nightmare, you like feel like you're being chased or being attacked or in some sort of distress. But normally, when you wake up from it, you remember what happened, right? But with a night terror, night terrors occur at a deeper sleep stage of sleep normally within the first few hours. And, you know, night terrors are, they're characterized by some peculiar stuff, right? The kids may sit up in the bed, they might kick and scream, they might shout, they might, you know, have a, you know, heart racing, they'll be inconsolable, they might walk around and all of that. And the thing you have to realize is that although they are doing these things, you're actually able to communicate with them. They're actually still asleep. And so, um, you know, with my my sister and my kids, for example, when they had their night terror episodes, I mean, they would let out this blood curdling scream and just cry relentlessly. And I mean, um, you know, you try to ask them, you know, what's going on so you can, you know, try to understand what's happening to them in their in their sleep. But they really don't know. And um, so uh, last night, for instance, I happened to fall asleep with my daughter in her bed. And, you know, at some point she sat up in the bed and I asked her if she was OK. She said, yeah, she laid back down. Um, but she kind of tossed and turned a bit and then she sat up and then she started kicking her feet. And at that point, I kind of knew what was about to happen. Um, but I found that the trigger for my kids and actually my sister as well was body temperature. You and, you know, my point for sharing that with you is that you have to find the trigger for your kids. So with my kids, for instance, as long as they're kept cool at night, then they sleep fine. And I mean, with my son, for instance, I could be under a blanket and sweats and he'd be in a T-shirt and a diaper when he was smaller and um, and he'd be sleeping fine. I'd be freezing my tushy off. And but my daughter as well, as long as uh, they're kept really cool, then they sleep fine. And because uh, what, what happened last night is that. Um, you know, when she woke up, I realized that the breeze that was coming in through her window was suddenly not there. So, um, you know, I immediately, you know, grabbed her and brought her downstairs, which is the coolest place in the house. And we sat on the couch and, um, and actually fell asleep there and stayed there for the rest of the night. So, um, you know, so for my kids, if they get too hot or air is not circulating, then they're more prone to have night terrors. So you just got to find the trigger for your kids. Um, the thing to realize also is that them having night terrors does not mean that something has happened to them. Something bad has happened to them. Um, from what I understand, it's, you know, just kind of a sleep disorder and it's 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 inherited and I guess it's on my side of the family since my sister had it and my children have it. So my husband totally blames me for that. I'm just teasing. But but the point is that um, it does happen. You are not alone. Um, you know, when the night terrors happen, the only thing that um, that you can really do is 
keep your child from hurting themselves. I usually hold my children and wipe them down with a cool towel while they are um, while they're having their night terror episode and your part is to stay calm and just really just try to console them because if you get worked up that also transfers onto the child so okay I think that's it for me and here's my baby girl right here say hi <laughs> she's just waking up okay all right so this is Lissandra Everett the millionaire mill spouse signing off and I'll see you on the next video bye